New York's Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo ordered the One World Trade Center lit up pink Tuesday night in celebration of a new state law that allows elective abortions through the ninth month of pregnancy for any reason, while also rolling back protections for babies born alive following a botched procedure. It is a heinous law that defies description. And make no mistake, it has nothing to do with women. It's about money. That, that was the sound that erupted from the New York Senate chamber Tuesday after the Democratic-held state government passed a bill 38 to 24 allowing preborn babies to be killed in the womb up until the moment they're born. And forget no uterus, no opinion, this bill was championed by a 61-year-old white man, passed by a majority male legislature, and sought to codify a 46-year-old Supreme Court decision handed down by nine dudes, but hey, women's rights or whatever. So now you can't give a lethal injection to a violent murderer in New York, but you sure as heck can give it to an unborn baby who committed the unforgivable crime of being inconvenient. You can't shoot someone for breaking into your home, but you can dismember a child at any point up until birth simply because you feel like it. Because apparently, early term abortions through forced miscarriage just weren't vile enough. Nope. There's nothing radical about it. New York had to go and make sure that they could poison and dismember eight month old unborn babies with well developed nervous systems, too. This gives people comfort. And honestly, I'm not sure that there are strong enough words in the English language to describe just how reprehensible this is. What country is this? What century is this? We have medical technology that has saved the lives of premature infants born under 22 weeks. We have machines that can pick up a baby's heartbeat as early as six weeks when it's still about the size of a blueberry. We can perform complex surgeries to repair defects in utero. We have 3D ultrasound equipment that has taken detailed videos of babies sucking their thumbs in the womb early in the second trimester. In what civilized society can these things exist alongside laws that allow, no, fully fund and sanction the dismemberment of clear and obvious children. It is the kind of thing that New York historically does. Even the majority of Americans who consider themselves pro-choice don't even agree with this. According to the most recent Gallup poll, fewer than one in three Americans say that abortion should be legal in the second trimester. Only 13% say that it should be allowed in the last three months of pregnancy. And I'm assuming most of those people have suffered some sort of brain damage. This law isn't just out of sync with medical science and basic ethics. It's out of step with what Americans want. New York historically leads on these types of issues. So the simple and obvious answer is this. Maybe left-wing politicians and their buddies over at the abortion clinics are in it for something even more sinister. Money. Last year, Planned Parenthood alone performed more than 332,000 abortions while providing less than 10,000 prenatal services and giving fewer than 3,000 adoption referrals across the entire country. They also raked in more than 563 million in taxpayer funds. The group that was founded by a racist maniac whose top level officials were caught on camera repeatedly admitting that they sell organs harvested from aborted children still takes in more than half a billion dollars every year in government money. It's an industry that literally hacks up children and sells them for profit. And if you think that barbaric laws like this one in New York get passed without a wink and a handshake from this billion dollar murder mill, I've got a bridge in the Sahara that you might be interested in. Because it sure as heck isn't about protecting women, children, or choice. And it's good to fulfill that legacy for New York. And until next time, I'm Brittany Hughes. Thanks for watching Reality Check. For more videos, subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and may God have mercy on America.